Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Thank you glad today see things came out, see things are on sale today. Today, uh, new release wise, the big things that come out is uh, Rob Zombie's uh, 3 from Hell. And with that one, I, I believe that Walmart has an exclusive edition which comes with a t-shirt for that one. Also though, the film uh, Crawl releases today, as well as the film uh, Stuber. Also though, at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff. And as always too, uh, leave me comments below, you know, letting me know what you guys thought of the DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed, uh, what you guys thought of them, if you guys have seen the movies. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, and I'm in here first today, though, because there's one specific horror movie which it looks like they should have in here. It's one of those ones I think that there's only, I believe there's only a DVD release of it, but it's one I've heard like a lot of really, really good things about, so fingers crossed they have it here and, you know, have put it out, so we shall see. But in here today, some of the things that released today was this one here, uh, Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans. That one's a $19.96 for the um, Blu-ray of that one, and then $12.96 for the DVD of that. Also, this film here called uh, Night Hunter released, and it's $14.96 for the Blu-ray, uh, $12.96 for the DVD. I'm going to have a review of this one at the end of this video. Like I was saying, one of the other uh, big things today was Stuber, which is another one I'll be talking about at the end of this video. I really thought this was a fun movie, though. I really like this one a lot. But they do have a bunch of these exclusives here for Three From Hell, and they're $17.96, I believe, for these ones here. Unless they're in the wrong spot, but I'm pretty sure that's what they what they cost. And it's um like it includes in here this shirt that says Disco Sucks. And I don't know if it's different artwork inside, or if it's the same artwork that's on the uh, you know the standard Blu-ray, or if it has exclusive artwork inside of this one. But I really, really like this movie a lot. You know, this of course is the third film in the series because the first was you know House of a Thousand Corpses, then Devil's Rejects, and then of course Three from Hell. And they have the 4K of that one here, and that one's on $19.96 for that, and that's a really good price for a brand new 4K. And then the the DVD one here though, and keep in mind though with the DVD, this one is the art rated cut of the movie so it's not the uncut one the uncut one is on only on the blu-ray and the 4k and the other one that came out today was uh, Crawl, which is another one that I really like this one a lot. What's cool too is this includes in here a three uh, month, free three months for uh, Shutter on here. So that's really cool. That's a, a really great amount of time because usually I think it's like you get when you get a promo for that, it's like a week or a month. But this one, like I said, is three months on that one. Uh, one of the other ones that released today was The Art of Self Defense. I just got a copy of this one to review today. So I'll have a review of this one at the end of the video uh, next Tuesday. But really look forward to checking this one out. This one's uh, $19.96 for the Blu-ray of that. With Crawl, that one is uh, $22.96 for the Blu-ray and $17.96 for the DVD. There's a couple of these different like collections here I'm seeing that are new. And it has like, I guess it's the Blu-ray, uh, or no, it's a DVD in here, but then includes a voodoo code for scary stories to tell in the dark inside of that one. So there's a number of different ones of these here, like this one for... Uh, see no evil here with the scary stories of telling the dark and it seems like it's all the dvd uh copies of those ones like uh sinister here uh you know text chainsaw massacre you're next these ones are all 1996 for these also one for blair witch and the blair witch uh, remake film also today, though, this one, The Lingering, that one released for $14.96 on DVD. But this is the one that I was going to get. It looks really interesting. It's only $12.96 for this. And like I said, I believe there's only there's no uh, Blu-ray release of this one. Unless they end up doing like a burn-on-demand Blu-ray release of this one down the line. Or your manufacturer on demand one. Uh, but that one, like I said, is $12.96. Also, though, this Alexander Didiadro movie released today called Can, I, can, uh, can You Keep a Secret? That one is $12.96 don't know anything about this one. I have to read about this one. If you guys have seen this one though, let me know how this one was. Also though, for $12.96, this was a really fun movie called The Drone. And I'm going to be having a really cool unboxing of a really cool promotional item for this one at the end of this video in the review portions. But this is from the same director who made the film Zombievers. This is basically though about a serial killer who gets killed and, you know, takes over, his soul takes over this drone that he was using to spy on people. And it's basically about a killer drone. And it's just a really, really crazy horror comedy. There's two spots down here that are empty. I can't tell though what those ones are. And I think this Emmanuel one, Emmanuel one released here for $14.96. I'm not sure though what this one was. But let's see though if there's anything else different 
over here though 4k wise though there was some new 4ks uh you know the um al pacino film here directed by brian de palma that one released today a uh, scarface for um 1796 for that one as well as american gangster that one's uh 1496 as well but over here though i'm pretty sure you all this stuff is the same because they only change this section out at the you know the first tuesday of the month so then it'll be all new stuff then so other than that, it doesn't look like there's anything else. But there, no, there is some TV, though. Uh, this is another one. I'll be talking about the Blu-ray of this one at the end. Looks like they only have the DVD of this one, but The Haunting of Hill House. And that one's uh, $26.96 for that one. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the different things I see in here today. Yeah, so I ended up getting that Haunt one in there. Now, it was, though, in the wrong spot, because I said it was $12.96, but it turns out it was mixed up with the Lingering one. So the Lingering one was $12.96. It was actually $14.96, but since they put it in the wrong spot, they ended up, you know, giving it that, that price for it. But yeah, like, I just want to make sure that you guys know this one was not $12.96, it was $14.96. Into Target we go. But over here, though, in the front of the store, though, it's all the same stuff from last week, so it doesn't look like they changed it over. I'll have to check over in the actual section, though, and see if they, you know, changed things out over there yet, though. But over here, though, they had the spots for the stuff, but it wasn't out. But they're going to have Stuber for $19.99 on Blu-ray, $14.99 on DVD, Crawl here for $22.99 on Blu-ray, and $17.99 on DVD. And they're going to have uh, Haunting of Hill House on DVD for $22.99 here. Into fries we go. It's a shame in here though. I think I haven't been in here for maybe like a little over a month or so and look at how like what a small amount of things are left here. I don't even know if they're getting in new stuff in here. You know they do have what's cool though is that you've been able to get stuff in here like Arrow video releases and stuff like that like you can get Society in here and that kind of thing but as of like new releases I don't think they're getting in anything new. Uh, because like if you look in the store I'll walk around and show some stuff it's like really like like every all the aisles and everything is really like empty in here yeah it's really weird i think yeah that, that it doesn't seem like at all any new releases at all like when i first moved out here in 2010 they would get this store got like everything new it's crazy though to see like you know how um you know empty it is now and nothing new whatsoever look at all the empty spaces and stuff in here and yeah even the adults only is, is, is totally emptied out but yeah, I, I think, see, like, look at the shelves over there, all empty over there, and then and all kind of empty spaces in all the aisles. Like, look at this. But there's no signs that say closing. But it definitely is looking like that's going to be the case, which is a shame, because like I said, this store used to, like, I remember, like, um, Black Friday, they used to have some of the best sales. Like, look at this. Look at how empty this is. Man, I, I think it's the it's gonna be very soon this will be gone. This is a huge store and they have all these kind of cool fish tanks and all this kind of stuff. But I've never really documented and like walked around and showed this place, but it's a gigantic place, but it's a shame to see that it's kind of like this now. Because look at all these empty spaces and every air every one of the sections is totally picked over and empty like that. Even down here. Yeah, so like I said, well, I'm, I'll definitely have to come back whenever it does close because that looks to be like that's going to be what's going to happen in here because, like I said, as you can see, look at this. But yeah, though, that's really crazy to see how, like, empty and picked over everything is in there. So, like I said, I feel like that's definitely going to end up going out of business, which is a shame because the closest I would relate that store to back when I first came out here in 2010 was to, like, a place like Tower Records where, like, you know, uh, you know, when something released on, like, Tuesday, they would get in everything. So they would get in, like, all the obscure movies and all that kind of stuff. It was, like, one of those kind of places where, like, if you look back on some of my early videos, you know, Tuesday shopping ones I'd come in here and they would have like a lot of catalog titles that came out and smaller releases all that kind of stuff but now as you see they don't even have any new releases at all and this past weekend, the new movies that I saw in theaters was the first one I saw was the film uh, Jexy, which stars, you know, Adam Devine. And that was, I, you know, that movie's got a lot of negative reviews, like from the critics and everything. I thought it was kind of funny, honestly. Uh, it was basically, though, about Adam Devine's character, who's, like, obsessed with his cell phone. He's on his cell phone all the time. He, like, anytime people invite him to go somewhere, he's never really doing it. He doesn't want to go out with them. All he sort of is just doing is, like, obsessing about the phone ever since he was a kid. 
you know, when his parents were like fighting and stuff, they gave him a phone to mess around with and he ends up like breaking his phone on one day and dropping it. So he goes to the store and to buy a new one and he gets it and it's like a, one of the more advanced phones and it has a thing on there kind of like Siri where it's like, um, the kind of a new thing and it's called Jexy and, um, the Jexy who's on your phone who's kind of would like help you with searches and if you ask Jexy where's the closest you know place to get pizza and that kind of stuff but the uh person on the phone this you know the robot on the phone uh the, like, like I said the Siri kind of thing on, on the phone that he has starts giving him like all kinds of grief in his life and like is talking to him and like telling him you know oh you you, you you're not busy if people say oh you want to go and hang out you know, later today and he's like oh I'm sorry I'm busy on my schedule and then Jexy's like no you're not you've got nothing going on and it's basically though kind of like taking over his life and telling him things to do and sort of trying to help him and help him better his life and it's a but it also has a kind of a lot of awkward kind of problems that happen because the thing is you know talks when it shouldn't and kind of gives people around him crap as well like I said I really liked it I thought it was a really fun movie uh, the other one that I saw was the movie that new film directed by Ang Lee starring Will Smith called Gemini Man another one that has some mixed reviews and another one I thought was a fun movie I'm always a fan of Will Smith uh, and it's basically though about his character is like this uh, contract you know works for the government and he like takes out people and stuff like that and he's gotten to the point where he feels like he's not as good as he was and he's decided to retire and he's kind of when he's retired he's kind of being watched and this you know Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character is watching him uh, you know unknowingly you know he's supposed to she's supposed to kind of be undercover but with right away he figures it out like in the first like 10 minutes of the movie you know when he retires and but then something because he ends up retiring and he ends up talking to someone that he worked with you know years before and the government's mad that he talked to them and they thinks that they you know that he let out some kind of a secret to to Will Smith's character they end up sending uh, a clone version of Will Smith that's like 23 years old and, when, and to come after Will Smith and, and kill him and it's kind of them going after each other and like you know fighting each other and all sorts of kind of problems and I, and it was all done you know with like like the de-aging technology and everything and for the most part I thought it was really well done there was only like one thing in it that wasn't great but um you know for the most part they did a really good job you know making Will Smith look like he was like 23 like you know how he looked in like um Fresh Prince of Bel Air and everything, but I don't know. I thought it was a fun movie. It was just like crazy kind of situations that he was in. If you guys saw either, either of those films, though, let me know in the comments below. You know what you guys thought of them or what movies uh, you saw this past weekend. If you guys got to check anything out. Into Best Buy we go. But over here, though, on the front, they have Stuber here on Blu-ray for $19.99, $24.99 on 4K. Uh, Crawl here is $22.99 on Blu-ray, and there are some empty spots. Like uh, Hellboy came out today on 4K, the original film, and it looks like they had a steelbook of that one for $22.99. They have Scarface here for $17.99 on 4K. Uh, Three from Hell here is $16.99 on Blu-ray and Night Hunter is $14.99 here. But over here though in the actual section they have a couple other things as well like they have the Art of Self Defense here for $22.99 here on Blu-ray and then Ultra Q and Ultra Man these ones both released today and I'm going to show you guys a look at these ones at the end of the video. These are what are both from uh, Mill Creek and these ones are really cool steelbook releases and both these ones are $24.99 for these ones. Over here though there's a couple things that are out empty as well like in the front the um you know they, uh, one of the other things that came out today was Scarface a limited edition one this is uh, $60 for that but this came out today. Uh, the Twin Peaks, the television collection, which has all three seasons together. I absolutely love this show, especially the new, I thought the newest season from a couple years back was a really, really great, you know, you know, bringing the series back, and I really love that. But that one's $60 for this set, or $59.99 for this one. And they do have The Haunting of Hill House here on Blu-ray, and that one's uh, $29.99 for that. But I don't see, though, any of the other ones, like the Hellboy Steelbook, which was over there in the front. I don't see any of that one over here, though. So it seems like that one sold out, as far as I can tell, though. So anyway, though, guys, that's all for my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me comments below, though, letting me know, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, if you guys picked up anything today. Also, as well, too, be sure to let me know, you know, what you guys thought of all the DVDs and Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video, if you guys have seen any of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. And also, if you guys haven't seen it yet, too, check out the link below for the Indiegogo for the film Butcher's Bluff, the upcoming slasher film that I'm going to be acting in. They have a whole bunch 
bunch of cool perks and stuff on there like you know pre-orders of the DVD and Blu-ray and digital downloads and all that stuff so definitely check out that link below but anyway though guys now stay tuned for the brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews now before we get to the reviews, I have a really cool thing I got sent from MVD, and it's a uh, bobblehead here, and this is from the line called uh, Rue Morgue's Rippers. This is a bobblehead here of HP Lovecraft, and this one I'll have a link below where you guys can order this one, and it's limited to 1,500 units, and it's num numbered here in the back, it's number 730 out of 1,500, and then even on the bottom of the um, bobblehead as well, it says 730 out of 1,500, but here's a look here, and this is, you know, uh, HP Lovecraft, you know, the, the right H.P. Lovecraft, and he has like a um, like a tentacle, like octopus kind of like um, arm thing for his arm, and he has um, you know like bat wings here. So a really cool uh, you know bobblehead here of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. Like like I said, want to let you guys know this one was available from uh, and like I said a link from the MVD website for that one. Now the first one here though is from Arrow Video, and this is a new film here called The Dead Center. This is an interesting movie. This is basically though about this guy. Very beginning of this movie, you see this, this guy who's you know passed away on an autopsy table, and you know he like had killed himself, and then like he gets put into like the body bag into like the um kind of like the freezer where they keep the bodies and everything and he ends up like right after they put him in there he wakes up comes back to life and he's like shivering and he goes and hides out in this um hospital room because the whole movie takes place inside of a mental hospital and it's like um he basically though is come back to you know to life and goes in, into this room where like there's like another patient there and he's like hiding under the covers and like one of the other beds and then like the next morning though in the morgue they're kind of like all like frantically panicking like where where did this body go? Where is the guy? Because, you know, where did the body go? Uh, so it becomes this whole big thing. And the guy who came there to, you know, to look into the body, he was like one of the other doctors. He kind of came there to look at him. And he he's kind of like going, well, how did the body just disappear like this? Then at the same time, too, it's also like the police matter going on with them, like looking into who this guy was because it was a John Doe, the one who at the, in the beginning of the movie had killed himself because like... Like, his death looked really suspicious, though, because, like, he had, like, this um, thing kind of carved into his back of this, like, weird circle-like thing. But this basically, though, deals, though, with the doctor at this um, mental hospital. And he's kind of there trying to take charge of things, but the one woman there is kind of like saying, you know, you have to, before you admit anybody here, you have to talk to me first. But essentially, though, it's kind of him dealing with this and this guy who's woken up there, you know, who died and came back to life and they find him in one of the rooms. They don't even know that was that body. You know, it's essentially, though, he's there and this doctor is kind of taking him in and he's trying to figure out exactly who is this guy, why is he acting the way he is. And when he's there, though, uh, strange things start to happen. Happen. That's essentially all you can say. But I always like movies that you know that take place in like you know mental hospitals and those kind of settings. And this was very like creepy, slow burn. Uh, you know what was going on? But it was like a really interesting movie. On here though, feature wise though, it has a commentary track on here with the writer and director on this one, as well as the co-star on this one, Jeremy Childs. Another commentary track on here with the writer and director, as well as the producers on this one and the cinematographer. It has a um, in-depth making of documentary featuring new interviews on this one. It has nine deleted scenes, including an alternate ending, uh, on-set interviews on this one, uh, an intruder, a short film from 2011 from the director, as well as another short film on here. It has on here, though, uh, two Easter eggs, has a theatrical trailer, image gallery, so lots and lots of features on this one. Also, too, it has a booklet in here with some pictures from the film and stuff about the you know production and all that kind of stuff as well, but like a really interesting slow burn film here. The next one here is from uh, Arrow Video as well. And this is the original Ring film here. And this was called Ring Goo. There's also a collection available as well, which has all three of the you know, original Ring, you know, Ring Goo films together as well. This is a super creepy movie. I really like the Naomi Watts, you know, remake as well. Like I that was the one I saw first. I remember when I saw that movie, then I went back and watched this one and I saw like the original The Grudge and the original The Eye, which really creeped me out. Like they, you know the these um, you know, horror films like the you know, the original ones uh, were much creepier all around. Even though I thought the remakes of them were, you know, especially the Ring remake was really creepy, the original one was even creepier and it's essentially though about this tape 
tape where if you watch this tape you you know you get this call and it says you die seven days later and that's essentially what it, what the movie is um, but you know it's a extremely creepy creepy movie has on here though a brand new 4k restoration a uh, transfer on this one as well as on here it has a the Ringu uh, legacy a series of interviews from critics and filmmakers on their memories of the Ringu series and its enduring legacy it has on here a brand new video interview with author and uh, critic Kat Ellinger on the career of the um, the director of the film also has theatrical trailers on this one and inside too here's a look that also has a booklet as well as has some stuff about the film the cast and the crew some stills and all that kind of stuff as well but like i said super super a uh, creepy film uh the next one here is from arrow video as well and this is from the arrow academy line this is one that i want to let you guys know is available this is a biopic film about um you know um was about Lon Chaney, who you know was the known as like one of the very first uh, special effects artists. You know that would put himself into these insane kind of creepy characters like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, you know um, who were some of the big the big ones? Hunch Hunchback of Notre Dame, Phantom of the Opera, and like you know would, like really with, it was experimenting with these type of techniques that no one had seen before at the time, and were really ahead of its time. And some of these techniques are still used today. But this was a biopic with John James Cagney star Starring as Lon Chaney, and this one was from uh, 19, I believe it was like 1953. No, not 1957. But this one has on here though a commentary track on here with film scholar Tim Lucas, uh, the man behind A Thousand Faces, a new look at uh, Lon Chaney and his incredible legacy by uh, by critic Kim Newman. Has the image gallery and theatrical trailer on this one. Also in here too, it has you know some still a booklet in here which has some stills from the film and all that kind of stuff as well. Like I said, one of you guys know that this one was available from Arrow Video from the Arrow Academy line. Now, the next one here is from Shout Factory Scream Factory line. And this is a movie I always really like this. I feel like this is one of like my like the top remakes. When I think of like top remakes of horror movies, I think of like this one, I think of um The Fly, I think of like um uh The Hills Have Eyes. Some of those ones like really like you know I always think of as really really good ones. And this one too it took it to a much different direction because the original one was like a campy kind of you know film. This one took it to this extreme like crazy gore like effects and stuff in this this is the uh collector's edition here of the blob and this you know stars uh kevin dillon uh shawnee smith you know went on to be in the uh saw films uh this is a really cool movie and it's basically though about like the blob that crashes down like this the substance that crashes down and kind of spreads throughout the town but in the original one though you know people got killed by the blob but it was like real like you know more pg g rated this one when the blob attacks you it's these like insane effects of these like meltdown people's skin and it's like really like gross out kind of effects and everything but it's really well done and it's basically though about Kevin Dillon and his girlfriend's character played by Shawnee Smith and you know they kind of witness the crash that happens and they kind of know what's happening but like the town isn't like believing them and then of course the blob starts taking over the town and it's kind of the town trying to figure out what they're going to do to stop the blob and it's just a really really fun uh, crazy movie I love uh, the new artwork here on the cover a uh, Feature wise of this has a commentary track on here, a brand new commentary track on here with the director, as well as a cinematographer on this one, and the special effects uh, makeup artist. Has a commentary track on here with uh, Shawnee Smith. It has a, uh, you know, it's a new commentary. It also has a uh, new interviews on here with uh, Chuck Russell, who's the director, as well as the production diner, designer, special effects uh, makeup artists on this one, as well as actors uh, Ricky Paul, uh, you know, as well as um, Bill Mosley, because Bill Mosley was in this movie as well. Has a commentary track on here with Chuck Russell, like an archival commentary. Has an isolated score, behind the scenes footage. So lots and lots of features on this one, but really, really fun. And like I said, one of the better uh, re makes and the next one here is from Shot Factory Screen Fragile Line as well. It's a Hammer Horror film from 1968 which stars Christopher Lee called The Devil Rides Out. This is basically though about Christopher Lee's character and his one friend go and he's, he's this one kid that he like checks on because like he made a promise to his family that he's going to check on this kid, you know, make sure he's doing okay and everything and he kind of hasn't been like, you know, contacting him in a while and he hasn't really heard from him too much. He goes over to his house and he kind of sees that all these people are there. There's some sort of a party going on and Christopher Lee's character is kind of noticing 
like something is up. There seems like there's something really weird going on there. The way the people are, the way they're kind of acting strange to him and kind of acting like they don't want him to be there, Christopher Lee's character and his friend. And, you know, he kind of, you know, it's essentially what this is, is it's a, um, you know, satanic ritual that these this group is planning. And, you know, Christopher Lee's character, you know, gets wind of this. And he's kind of him trying to, you know, rescue this kid from, you know, participating in this ritual before it's too late. And then it's a, by, by doing so, it kind of causes, these people to kind of come after him and it causes a whole slew of problems kind of like in like like a movie like you know race with the devil when they witnessed that satanic ritual going on they found out about that and we're kind of coming after them it's got that sort of kind of vibe to this one on here though it has a brand new 2k scan from the original 20th century fox you know uh you know camera negative here interpositive negative looks really really good here great transfer on this one it has a brand new commentary track on here with film historian steve haberman and uh constantine nasser it also has a um, archival commentary on here with Christopher Lee and Sarah Lawson. It has a Making of Devil Rides Out on here. It has a World of Hammer Horror episode on this one. Still Gallery and a theatrical trailer on this. And the next thing I got here is from Lions Gate. And it's a really cool promo item I got sent to show you guys. This is to promote the uh, DVD and digital release of the film The Drone. And I talked about that one uh, film last Tuesday. And I really like this movie. This is from the same director who made the film uh, Zomb Beavers, which was another movie I really liked. But essentially, though, this is about a serial killer who would use a drone to kind of spy on his victims and you know that was kind of how he was spying on them and the cops in the beginning of this movie have caught him and found him and it's kind of during that there's like a lightning storm going on and he ends up getting struck by lightning and ends up you know his soul ends up taking over this drone and then it's this couple that moves into this new neighborhood the drone kind of like you know because like he took over this drone like with his soul so this drone's like flying around like committing murders and everything and he ma it makes its way to the trash nearby and of course the new owner he finds this drone he's like oh i got a drone and of course though the drone is kind of messing around with things in the house messing around with things like searching things on the internet trying to put both the couple both the, you know the couple kind of causing troubles between them and making all these problems and like killing people around the at the, around at the same time but it's like i really like the movie because it's a comedy horror movie but what they sent here though was a really cool uh item which is they actually sent over a drone and it's a drone it's, it's a you know the drone covered in blood so it's like a blood splatter drone which was like such a cool uh, promotional thing because you know like i said the movie is about a killer drone and they actually sent over a drone it has you know the um controls and all that kind of stuff i haven't gotten to try it out yet but to me like i said it's just such a cool promotional item to promote the dvd and digital release of the film like i said if you guys have not seen that movie really would highly recommend you guys check that one out and the next one here is from lionsgate as well it's a movie here called tone death which stars robert patrick and amanda crew of course you know robert patrick from you know terminator 2 and tons and tons of movies amanda crew who was in uh, sex drive and lots of other things as well i've always been a fan of her and this is basically though about her character and it's kind of like everything in her life is kind of going in a terrible direction at once she ends up like losing her job and like everything's kind of falling apart and like um she basically wants to go and get away and have like a trip away by herself to kind of get away from everything to kind of chill out for a little while so she wants you know she's like looking at like bed and breakfast kind of like houses online and she comes across one that looks like like a really nice place and uh robert patrick's character is the owner of the place and essentially though you know um it's it's basically though she gets there rob patrick's character is kind of acting a little weird you know something is up and i don't want to ruin anything that what happens here though is but essentially though rob patrick's character uh you know finds out that he's going to have to be because of his son says he's gonna to have to like leave his house because he's saying to him that he has dementia and um he's gonna to have to stay in a senior care center where they can watch him and everything and he's like well i'm perfect there's nothing the matter with me why throughout this movie though you see him kind of seeing these weird visions of things and weird stuff going on but there's one thing that he has never done in his life that he wants to do and as you see there's weapons there so that's all i can say and essentially though it's kind of like she's between what's happening here but it, it was really well done this is from the same director who did the movie incision which is another one that i really liked a really cool horror movie if you guys have not seen that movie highly recommend you guys check that one out so I always have liked his films and i this one has that same kind of vibe to this one but highly recommend you guys check this out this one has on here though a of a featurette on this one. 
The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. This one gets a top recommendation. This is a movie that I knew nothing about going into this movie. It has a really great cast here. You know, uh, Nick Robinson, you know, who is from, you know, uh, Love, Simon, you know, you know, played Simon. He's in this film. Margaret, Mar Margaret uh, Qualley, you know, who was in most recently in, you know, um, you know, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Her character is the one who's like gets picked up by, um, you know, one of the Charles Manson's girls in the film who is, you know, puts her window, foot on the window. Like, I, that's she's most known from that sequence. I remember when always talks about that movie. Uh, Mar uh, you know, Blythe uh, Danner is in the movie. Brian Cox, uh, Greg Kinnear, Amy Ryan. Uh, you know, I always have been a fan too of Brian Cox. But this movie here is called Strange But True. Now, this one's a little bit tough to explain. But this is basically, though, about Nick Robinson's character who's living with his mother and you know in the, in the beginning of this movie though his character had had an accident and like his leg is really badly injured so he's come back home to live back with his mother again and um his relationship with his mother is kind of all up in the air because like uh you know his you know older brother had died five years before and ever since that happened it kind of turned the whole life apart because like Greg Kinnear was you know his, his father and you know he kind of left Amy Ryan's character and kind of went his own way because of that because it split the whole family up and you know his uh, Nick Robinson's mother is really depressed because of this and they're, they've just been a really downward spiral together and they aren't really getting along too well and they're having all sorts of arguments but uh, Margot Qualley's character comes back and her character was dating the brother who had his brother who had died five years before and she came back and she's like saying this stuff like oh and she's pregnant saying you know uh, I talked to a um, psychic and they said that it's the baby the father is your brother and they're like well how the how is that possible he died five years ago and she's like well I never slept with anyone else the only person I ever slept with was you know your brother back then and that was it and and I don't know how this happened but I'm I think that, that it's it's he's the father and it, it becomes this whole big thing and like um kind of like this mystery to this of what's going on here and, and there's everything it has explanations I will say though you know but it's totally like goes in these crazy directions that you really will not see happen see coming in here and I thought it had it's one of those things that has lots and lots of twists to the whole thing really love Brian Cox's character in here he was really good like the music to this movie like the whole tone vibe of this movie was cool it was just one of these things that I feel like I really hope people see this movie because I absolutely love this movie the way this was put together and like I said I knew nothing about this movie and sometimes it's really cool to watch a movie when you know nothing whatsoever about it that's like I said, I don't want to tell you too much about this one and ruin anything, but like I said, it, it makes sense what, what's going on as you watch this. But it has on here, though, a making of, because it's called Grounded in Reality, Making of Strange But True. But like I said, one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. If you guys have seen this one as well, let me know your thoughts of this one. The next one here is from Lionsgate as well. This is a movie that stars no Naomi Rapace and Luke Evans. It's called uh, Angel of Mine. This one's basically, though, about Naomi no Rapace's character who... Um, of course, you know, was in the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo films. She's also in a movie, too, called The Monitor, which I always really liked that. It was a cool horror movie from a couple years back, uh, which was one, if you guys have not seen that one, definitely recommend you guys check that one out. But this is basically, though, about, like, um, her character. And she, she her, you, you can tell, though, that something is going on with her and her husband. They, like, have split up, and they haven't, like he's going to end up getting custody of their one kid and you, you can just tell that like there's something going on and the one day at, her, at the no races races character goes to her son's um you know party and um then he and you know when she's there though she sees this one girl at the party and she's like saying to you know the son who is that and she's he's like oh that's the the my one friend's uh, sister and she starts becoming uh, obsessed with this girl and kind of like and you can see, you're trying to figure out exactly well why is she curious about who this kid is and like acting as if she might know who this kid is or have known who this is and it's kind of about like this obsession and about like kind of and you're also wondering like when you start finding out more about what's going on here is she imagining these things because you can tell that like something had happened with her relationship with Luke Evans before there was more to this going on it's one of these movies where it has like it's as throughout the movie as it goes along you find out more and more about this one but it was a really interesting thriller here with all kind of different stuff happening in this one 
Has on here, though, a making of Angel of Mine and has cast and crew interviews as well as a trailer gallery on this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Fox. This movie stars um, Kamal Najiani. I'm always saying his name wrong, but I, I, for a little bit, uh, Camille Najiani. For a little bit, I knew how to say it right, and then I screwed it up, I'm pretty sure. And uh, Dave Batista. And this is called Stuber. And this one, you know, uh, Camille was in the movie... Um, the big sick and he's like been in tons of stuff like i always liked him too in mike and dave need wedding dates like i felt like he stole the show and like his scene in that movie but like i always like he's like a character actor too he's been like so many different things and batista I, I believe this is dave batista's first movie where he was like the lead like considered like the lead of the film where he like carried like for, for a uh you know theatrical film because he has been in like a couple of different ones that were more direct to video ones but i believe this was his first like theatrical one because there's one coming out soon when he's like um has this kid and he's like a sp she's like he's like a spy or something like that but this is basically though about um you know, Dave Bautista's character, who is this cop, and he's trying to um, track down this one guy, and he's been trying to track him down for years, and he keeps on getting away and everything, and he ends up, in the beginning of this movie, having, like, um, surgery on his eyes, you know, LASIK surgery, so, he, you know, because of that, he has, like, to wear these, these glasses from it, and his eyes are all messed up, so he can't see at all, so he can't see to drive to, you know, chase down this bad guy that he's finally found, so he has to get in an Uber, and Camille's character is the Uber driver, and it's kind of like them becoming like a team together against Camille's character who doesn't really want to have to do this, but he's kind of like stuck going and like driving around and kind of trying to, you know, solve this mystery of this person. And along the way, there comes and becomes all these other kind of problems that are happening, everything. It's actually really funny. I thought they were both really good together in this movie. And it's just kind of about like every sort of problem that can happen, can happen. And his, like I said, Dave Bautista's character can't see, so he has to kind of guide him around. And because he can't see, see why because of the surgery he's like messing things up and like you know having things go totally wrong because of it on here though this has a deleted scenes gag reel it has joko rama has a comedy track on here with the director and camille uh, uh, on this one as well but like i said really really fun movie here and the next one here is from Disney, and this is the live-action Lion King here. Now, this is, t you know, it's technically done and animated to look like it's live-action, but it's not actually live-action because I was watching the behind-the-scenes, and everything in here was done digitally. Like, even the backgrounds were done on the computer. But they did an amazing job on all that, though, because, like, the, especially the backgrounds, like, making it look super photorealistic. And what was cool, too, was they had a feature on here, too, showing, like, how they were doing the voice recordings. And it wasn't, like, the typical just where the actor was standing in a booth and that kind of stuff, like, doing their lines and everything they actually had them in a room together where they actually would act out the scenes so they would be like the main people would be together and they would be like in a room and they'd actually be shooting it too for like reference to their acting and everything but it was a cool way to do it because they had like um to make it actually seem like it was shot like it was like uh, you know to be real as, as opposed to being an animated film and i don't know i thought that was a really cool technique that john favreau you, you know brought to this movie but this is essentially though the story of simba and his father and it's kind of like if you guys know the original lion king uh it's just pretty much what you know know that same story and everything but it's what ends up happening though to when Simba's father ends up you know getting you know killing getting you know dying and um as a result of Scar, because Scar wants to, you know, take over the throne because he doesn't like that his brother is, like, in charge of things and he wants to be the king. And it's basically, though, about Simba, you know, going out into, into the woods and meeting Timon and, in the, you know, into the wilderness and meeting Timon and Pumbaa, who are voiced by, you know, Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen. You know, Donald Glover is the voice of Simba. But I like this movie. I thought, you know, like I said, it's very much the same, you know, or, you know, story-wise and everything, but it's, you know, like I said, done to look like it's live action. And, like, all that's was really well done but on here though it has behind the scenes on here with the cast and filmmakers it has on here uh the beyonce uh spirit music video on here it has a comedy track on here with john favreau as well as it also has a sing-along version of the movie there's also an introduction on here with john favreau as well but like i said if you guys are fans of lion king definitely worth checking out and the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers. They sent our free copy of this one. Lay guys know this one is available. This is the DC Universe film Wonder Woman Bloodlines. This is the 4K edition, which has the 4K, the Blu-ray, and a digital code of the film. Now, this is the first um, DC animated you know, Wonder Woman film in uh, 10 years. The last one was in 2009, which was the Wonder Woman movie back then that for animated-wise. Because, you know, her character has been in some of the other, you know, DC Universe animated films. But this is, the, this, like I said, the second, you know, one where she's the lead character in the story. But this one one, though, you know, starts off as an origin story to her character on her planet. 
kind of dealing with like the training that she's going through and everything and the Steve Trevor's character who ends up crashing down and you know of course she ends up rescuing and then like you know she ends up you know saving him and you know her mother Wonder Woman's mother is like saying he can't be here and he gets like in prison there and you know of course she like leaves with him and escapes with him and it's kind of like the conflict of Wonder Woman and her mother because of all of this and of course her going back to where he's from and you know then of course then the villains come into play and then it's like there's an actually a number of of different villains in this one uh, but on here though feature wise though this has a feature out on the on the film here it has a sneak peek at uh, DC Universe's next animated movie uh, Superman Red Sun as well as two uh, DC Vault uh, cartoons on here and those are both like I think 22 minutes long but 4k wise though this one here looks really really good uh, that's one thing with the, you know I always say too with 4k I think animated films look really good and this one you know really you know 4k the big thing is the HDR and it really boosts the contrast levels and the brightness levels so it's just a much much brighter uh, picture all around and much more different contest le you know contrast levels to the picture and everything but if you guys are fans you know of the character of Wonder Woman as well as the DC uh, Universe animated films would definitely recommend you guys check this one out and the next one I got here is from Warner Bros as well they sent our free copy of this one lay guys and this one was available this is Veronica Mars the complete first season here and this is the complete first season of the brand new series you know that's on Hulu so this is technically would be the fourth season because there was three seasons you know when the show originally aired then there was the movie which I think was 2014 and like I said now this is the newest uh, season of the show this is about you know Kristen Bell's character who is Veronica Mars who is this private investigator who works with her father and this is basically though with her trying to solve throughout this uh, se you know season of the show about like this explosion that had happened and you know she's trying to go and solve this and kind of looking into the whole thing and while at the same time she's having you know they continued like conflicts with her father about certain things about you know them working together and everything and it just continues on like when it comes to the show though I only saw though a, like maybe a few episodes of it back in the day and then I saw the movie they said like I said from 2014 but I, from what I've seen of this show though I've really liked liked always a fan too of Christian Bell but this one has on here though feature wise Veronica Mars at Comic-Con 2019 I always like when they include the Comic-Con features on these releases um, this one here is from Warner Brothers as well they sent our free copy of this one this is one I just want you guys know was available and this is a series here called uh, Bat Back and back again, uh, back again. I don't know how to say it for sure, but this is called Battle Planet: Origin of Species, and this is a Cartoon Network show. Like I said, though, just want to let you guys know that this one was available. If this was a show that you guys were a fan of, this one now has a uh, DVD release here. It's a uh, two-disc set in here, and also has like a um, an ad in here for a. Uh, uh, upcoming uh, toy here as well. Like I said, just want you guys like, let us know that this one was available if you guys were interested. Uh, the next one here is from Paramount. It's a movie that stars uh, Henry C uh, Cavill, you know, who, who's you know Superman, uh, Ben Kingsley, Alexander Dadiadro, Stanley Tucci. And this is called a Night Hunter, and this is uh, basically though about uh, Henry Cavill Cavill's character, who is this investigator who's trying to like solve like the. Um, it, well, basically what happens in this, though, is, you know, Ben Kingsley's character, and I believe it's his daughter. I was kind of confused at first if it was his daughter or not, but they have this kind of operation that they work together where it's kind of like... Um, like them, they try and like catch guys that are like meeting girls online and everything. These bad guys and everything, and um, they end up catching this one guy who they believe was like this massive, terrible serial killer, and. Um, Henry Cavill's character is not happy though about the way that they're doing these things and catching them, but they, they but they they're like going, well, we caught this guy who's this terrible serial killer, and you've been trying to find him all this time, and we because of our operation we found him, and you didn't, and of course though. There's something weird going on here because once this guy's caught, uh, like at, at his house, uh, like things are happening though. Like the police are in there, and some kind of gas gets let out. You know why this guy is in prison, and you know kills them, and all the agents die in there. And there's like explosions in their cars and stuff that are happening. And the guy though that they've arrested though is acting really strange. He won't talk. He's acting like kid-like and strange the way he's being, and like he's not saying anything. And like I was and Danny Adro's character is one of the uh, the cops who's like working with him trying you know with Henry Cavill's character trying to figure out exactly what's going on here and it's one of those things where it's like this um 
like a real like lots of twists going on of trying to figure out exactly you know how is this stuff going on why this guy is in prison you know is the guy that they caught the guy is it like something he's mastermind is there somebody else it's kind of like what's going on here uh, like I said one of the guys on this one's available from Paramount and the next one I got here is from Paramount as well and this is a really creepy show here this is a show it was originally on Netflix and this is called the um, the haunting of Hill House and this one here has the extended director's cut and it has extended um three extended episodes on this one as well as four director's commentary tracks on these ones with Mike uh, Flanagan you know who is directing Dr. Sh you know Dr. Sleep which is the sequel to The Shining was like I'm really interested in seeing that one but this is a show like I heard like a lot of stuff about how creepy this show was and like how in certain shots you know you see like they hid ghosts and stuff like that like faces and stuff like that in the background and stuff and I did notice you know one or two of them while I was watching this because I just started watching this show and it's a really really well done super super creepy show this is basically though about this family that's living in this house and they're only there because they want to fix the house up but like little by little, the kids and everything start seeing things. And it's throughout the show, though, it cuts back and forth between, you know, back and back, you know, when their family was there and, then, and when they were kids and now as they're adults. And it's kind of like... um they're having all sorts of problems when they're adults though and it kind of relates to what was going on in the past because like the one son is a writer now kind of like a Stephen King kind of guy and he would write stories about like haunted type encounters and um, you know and, but yet he never really saw a ghost but it was more what his si siblings were witnessing when he was there but um so he would kind of go around the country and like talk to people who had ghost encounters to you know include in his books but then like at the same time his one sister was like having sorts of problems it's basically though all about them kind of coming in the first episode coming back together again with all the relationship to this house and it kind of goes from them as adults spend them to back as kids and you find out more and more about what had you know went on in this house but it's a really creepy show like I said it has extended director's cut so with commentary track on this one with the creator and you know director Mike Flanagan for those episodes and, and and as well as additional commentary by creator director Mike Flanagan for episode two storm so it has the commentary on the, the extended episodes and then an extra episode as well that he did a commentary track on uh, the next one here is from Paramount as well and this is the uh, steelbook edition here of Galaxy Quest and this is the same original um, you know uh, blu-ray disc from years back in here which has tons of features on here but it's in a really cool uh, brand new uh, steelbook edition here and this is one of those movies I watched this one again recently as well but you know feature wise though it has all the different stuff like I said from the original one like deleted scenes uh, featurettes on here you know so lots and stuff on this one but this movie though is basically though it's kind of like um it was a show like it's basically though about the actors who come together you know like Tim Allen's character um you know Alan Rickman Scorny Weaver who were on this show it was like a Star Trek kind of show it was really popular it was on for a couple seasons and basically now you know after the show's been off the year the uh, off the off the air for a number of years they they get together every so often and go to conventions and kind of that's kind of how they make a living is just going to conventions and you know they don't really get along too well with Tim Allen's character because he's kind of real full of himself and they don't really like like him he's always late for like the events and the meetups and everything but what ends up happening though is these actual real aliens you know in space they actually watch the show galaxy quest and they believe that it's a real show so they come to earth to find you know um tim allen's character and the real people and you know because they need their help to kind of you know they're having like a major problem in space with this alien that's coming after them and everything so they need them to kind of come and help command the ship and help them so it's these actors there you know their actor characters getting transported to space and having to kind of pretend like they know what they're doing when they're just actors and it's sort of all this sort of problems and everything but it's one of those shows one of these films so if you if you guys have never seen this one an absolute must watch watch like I always have loved this movie this really cool like I said new steelbook edition for this one the next one here is from um, uh, you know epic pictures and this is from their dread presents line it's a movie here called harpoon and this one was basically though about um, a group of these friends and um, you know they um, the very beginning of this movie though the one friend comes over like to meet up with the other ones because it's like this couple and he comes over there and, and he kind of thinks that his girlfriend is like sleeping with the other with the friend and they get in this like crazy fight and like this like totally like insane nuts fight that they're having and like um, he's and she's like oh no it's just a surprise thing I don't know what's going on what's going on here and they end up um, 
taking the boat out. They're like, oh, when they want to chill out after what was going on and all this kind of misunderstanding. So they go out on the, on the boat out in the middle of the ocean, kind of just to kind of chill out out there. But then like things go drastically wrong. And it's kind of like right when they get there, you can tell like they're having like this still having like tension with each other, the way they're acting. And they end up like breaking down out there. And it's kind of about like sort of these people that are kind of paranoid with each other as it is and like their paranoia out there it gets worse and worse and worse as the movie goes along and it keeps on building up with their craziness and the way they're getting and the movie just gets more and more and you know as intense as this one goes along here this one has on here though a commentary track on here with the director as well as a behind the scenes featurette deleted scenes uh, b-roll roll footage as well as uh, trailers on this one the next ones here are both from uh, Movie Zing, and I'll have a link where you guys can order these ones for the best price. These are also uh, Warner Archive releases. And this is one I was really excited about because I really love 70s TV movies. Like, I absolutely love, like, uh, you know, Warner Archive recently released uh, Bad Ronald, which is one of my favorite TV movies. One of the other TV movies I love is not the Klaus Kis Kinski film, the, um, but the one called Crawl Space, which was in the 70s, which is actually the one director of uh, Bad Ronald was one of, like, the co-directors on. Uh, crawl space and that one I dream of that one having a blue release one day but this one here is a great uh, TV movie here called don't be afraid of the dark and Camilo del Toro did a you know remake of this one and kind of changed it around a lot of things to it but I liked his remake as well but this one to me the original was a much much creepier movie there's something about 70s TV movies that like there's something about them that's just really creepy and like um they gave this one a great transfer, but this is basically though about this couple that ended up moving into this house because I think it was like the father ended up, you know, um, they inherit, yeah, they inherit this mansion. I believe it was the father who died in it, and um, you know, she's there and she wants to kind of move things around in the house and kind of redecorate and kind of change it around. And there's like a boarded up fireplace and boarded up area, and, and she ends up like opening it up and it's like these little weird creatures that are in there that she sees that are kind of wrecking havoc and kind of causing all sorts of like nightmare situations for her and it's just a really creepy like I said super creepy movie has on here though a brand new commentary track on here with um, Amanda Race who's from the Made for TV Mayhem as well as um, you know Uncle Creepy uh, from Dread Central so that was really cool Uncle Creepy is on the commentary on this one as well as um, screenwriter Jeffrey Riddick from Final Destination and Day of the dead and sean abley from uh, fangoria but really cool to have that on here as a feature this one here is from warner archive as well and like i said a movie zing and warner, warner archive this is uh the fearless vampire killers this is directed by um, roman polanski and this one was from 19 um 66 and this was like a parody uh dracula type film and it was kind of like around this time when they were doing a lot of the hammer horror kind of uh dracula vampire movies this was klaus kinski you know no not klaus kinski you know um you know roman polanski doing his um kind of parody of that and kind of like taking things to the over over the top levels and like this this vampire hunter kind of guy coming into this town and like finds out this girl is missing and he got you know gets to this mansion and it's kind of where count dracula is there but it's kind of like all these kind of bumbling kind of problems and like over the top kind of humor and everything this kind of humor it's not going to be like for everybody it's much more you know it has like a real like 60s kind of vibe and everything but it is a really fun you know movie you know this is a couple years before i think i think it was like three years before Ron polanski did you know uh, rosemary's baby but on here though this has a vintage making a featurette on here as well as a theatrical trailer but picture quality wise though both these ones look great on you know blu-ray really really great great uh, new transfers on these uh, the next one here is from blue underground and this is a movie which i really love this movie and it's um you know called two evil eyes this one here has a really cool lenticular cover here that moves also underneath of here too it has brand new artwork on this one as well and this one on here, though, includes the um, the Blu-ray and extras disc, as well as the motion picture uh, soundtrack as well, which is music by po uh, Pino Dongenio, you know, who um, my favorite music that he ever did was, um, you know, Body Double, like was is the... Um one of those movies, if you guys have never seen Body Double, you know, absolutely a must-watch movie. But this is basically, though, it's um, it's a film, it's an anthology film, where it's two different movies here, um, the, you know, two different stories. One's directed by George Romero, one's directed by Dario Argento. And I think originally this was, originally it was going to be four people, you know, four directors coming together to do this when it was kind of first perceived. And it's like um, George Romero's character is about this um 
it's Adrian Barbeau's character and kind of like um, she, her husband's like really sick and she really wants to get rid of the husband so she you know inherits the money and um, you know she, cause she has this boyfriend on the side and it's kind of like their plan and things are going really bad and it's like deals with like this zombie and all kind of crazy stuff my favorite segment though is Argento's one which was um, you know with um, uh, Harvey Keitel's character and you know he ends up um, having this black cat that he gets and the black cat is like causing all sort of havoc in his life and like um, you know it's his girlfriend gets the cat but he can't get rid of this cat and like he kind of the cat sort of drives him insane and it's just it, it goes in these insane directions but I really like this movie like I said it is a really really great very underrated anthology horror movie that you don't hear about as often as some of the other ones and it was just really well done you know the music in here is really good as well so that's why it was really cool that they included the um, you know the uh, commentary you I mean you know the soundtrack CD on this one but on here though some of the new features on here it has a new commentary track on here with uh, Troy Harworth author of Murder by Design the um, Unsane C uh, Cinema of Dario Argento uh, some of the other new features on here is um, some brand new uh, cast interviews on this one an interview on here with the composer interview with the co-writer interview with the first assistant director interview with the makeup artist on this one uh, as well as some of the archival uh, you know interviews as well on this one I'll show you guys a look inside at this as well like I said, it has the um, motion picture soundtrack, and it's a two-disc set. Uh, it, has, it also has on here a brand-new 4K restoration. Looks great. Really, really great brand-new transfer on this one. Also has a booklet in here. Which has you know some some you know some stills and some stuff about the production and everything in this one as well. But another one, if you guys have seen this one too, let me know what you guys thought of this movie. But one, if you guys have not seen this one, highly recommend you guys check this one out here. And the next one I got here is from ITN Distribution, and this one you guys can get is same with this next one from ITN Distribution as well. You guys can find these ones in Walmart. You know if you guys want to get them in stores. But it's a movie here called Art of the Dead, which stars Jessica Morris, Tara Reid, uh, Richard Greco, and this is basically though uh, I will say. I wish Richard Greco was in the movie more because I really liked his character. He was like going for like a real like Nicolas Cage kind of like crazy character in the beginning of this movie. But like his character had like these paintings. These paintings were like cursed paintings. And, um, you know, he ended up, you know, killing his family and everything and he kills himself. And the paintings end up going like up for auction and everything. And Tara Reed's character is the one who's like, you know, in charge of selling the paintings. And this like um, this family ends up buying them. But like, you know, the paintings had like a past, so like, they're kind of like um, anyone that like looks at these paintings, they like commit murder, or they commit crazy things, or they kill themselves, or all these kind of things. It's all, and there are actually really cool paintings in this. But essentially though, this family ends up buying these paintings, and little by little, like really crazy things starts happening, you know, in their house. And it kind of is like, is a crazy build up to like insanity, what goes on. It was kind of reminded me like, um, it was like an All You Afraid of the Dark episode that had like um, paintings where you're like kind of like you got trapped in the paintings and it was like a bunch of different paintings and stuff. It was like making me think of that a little bit. But you know, this of course, you know, is much more R-rated and everything with like gory and everything that's happening. But that's essentially what it is though, is like the paintings have all these meanings behind them. And you know, uh, little by little though, it's just kind of like terrible things that's happening. And even the people like the art dealership, like when they're, before they get them to the new family, the one security guard looks at a painting and like puts a hose down his throat and like starts like exploding from water and it's like all kind of crazy stuff happens but on here though feature wise this has uh, deleted scenes as well as a commentary track on here with uh, the director Ralph Kanaski on this one as well this one here is from ITN distribution as well it's a movie here called Dear Diary and this one was about um this one girl in the beginning of the movie, you know, um, she's like, it looks like it's going to be like a regular, normal, like family dinner and everything. And she comes back with the water. She like, says, and they're going, oh, could you mind getting us some more water? And she ends up like putting something in the water to poison the family. And, um, the poison like wasn't really working. So at night she goes and like kills the entire family. And, but she had like a diary that she kept, you know, kind of writing about like what was happening and what kind of made her do these things and everything. In the beginning of this movie though, it's about like this guy is like an investigative journalist who's like looking into this diary and you find out that he had died because like the one main guy, he's like at um, the funeral for him. And he's like, oh, I don't know why I'm here. I never really knew him. I never really worked in the same building with him. We never really talked. And that one guy who's like in charge of this, and you know this 
report they're going to do about it. He's like, well, listen, you know, he needed to finish this report. You know, he died before he finished it. I need you to start looking into what he was doing and you kind of see if you can try and make sense of all of this and kind of put together the report of this whole thing. So he ends up going to do this. Of course, though, it's kind of like by him doing this, you know that it was not a good thing. And because like what the girl did in the beginning of this movie. So it's kind of like him, like, like by doing this, you know, it's not going to be good for him. But I actually like this one a lot here. Like I said, both these ones you guys can get if you guys want to get them in stores, you guys can get them in Walmart. And the next ones I got here are from Mill Creek Entertainment. These are some really cool brand new steelbook releases here. Now these ones, there's also non-steelbook editions of these ones available as well. Uh, these ones here is uh, Ultra Q uh, Season 1 and Ultraman Season 2. Now basically though, Ultra Q was the first series of the show and then it ended up becoming Ultraman. But it basically though, if you guys are not have not heard of the show, uh, Ultra Q was about like, every episode was about a different alien or a creature kind of coming and wrecking havoc in Japan and about the group of the people who are trying to um, you know stop them and figure out how to stop and save the day but then in the second series it became Ultraman kind of came and then was helping the people kind of you know you know helping them fight off the aliens and the creatures and stuff that were coming and it's just a really fun show so I feel like too like if you guys are a fan of stuff like Godzilla uh, I would definitely recommend this show also too like if it wasn't for Ultraman I don't feel like shows like uh, you know Power Rangers would ever have existed because it has that very similar kind of vibe with the way it was shot and the way the creatures look and all that kind of stuff. These ones also have the original uh, Japanese audio tracks on these ones. Now also I want to show you guys too, they have a really cool episode guide like Ultra Q uh, has on here, like a full episode guide which talks about the episodes. They also have a thing in here which is the Ultra Q Monsters Guide which shows you the monsters that are in the show and the episodes and all that kind of stuff and they also have a character guide as well and for Ultraman which was the, you know, the, like I said, the second season, that was in color color as a full episode guide as well which are really well put together episode guides here they also have a guide to of the aliens and this one here shows you all the uh, creatures and monsters and everything but really really fun uh, shows here and here's a look too at the steelbooks closer looks at the steelbooks here's the Ultraman one and the Ultra Q one here really really well designed ones here the next one here is from um, MVD and this is one I want to let you guys know was available and this is a uh, documentary here called Called VHS Nasty, and then one thing I want to let you guys know about this too was uh, I am actually have a uh, you know I'm interviewed in here a couple of different parts in this documentary. And this is basically, though, uh, about, like, you know, the banned films in, in, you know, in the UK and the video nasty films, which was, like, um, all kind of about, like, in the 80s, a lot of the films got banned. And this is all people kind of talking about, you know, like, filmmakers, directors, actors talking about, you know, their takes and thoughts on the banned films and kind of their memories of it and some of their favorite, you know, films that were in the, in the video nasty list and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, uh, this one here is directed by, you know, put together by Tony Newton. Uh, but like I said, one thing I know that this one was available. The next one here is from uh, SGL, uh, SGL Entertainment. It's a movie called uh, Deviant Behavior. And this is about this uh, this man who's wearing this this mask of this woman who's going around and killing people and it's about um the um, one of the people that's kind of gone missing, they they end up hiring, um, you know I think it was the father I think I believe it was the father of of it. Um, you know, he ends up hiring this police detective or this you know private detective to f find where the daughter is and find out who was behind all the, her being going missing and everything, and. Um, it's kind of about like this cat and mouse kind of thing about him searching for this killer, the prior detective, and kind of all the, the things that happen along the way. This one has on here, though, uh, it's a two-disc set. The one, first one has feature-wise. It has a commentary track, trailers, uncensored music video. And then it actually has on the second disc, it has the movie soundtrack on this one as well. So really cool that it includes the soundtrack. And the last one here is from Wild Eye Releasing. This is from the Wild Eye Roll and Extreme line. I just covered some stuff up so no one says anything. But this is a movie here called Fang Boner. And it's a really, really goofy kind of concept and everything. It's about this guy who ends up, um, you know, he meets up with this girl that he met on like a, you know, kind of a dating website kind of thing. But, you know, when he's there, though, he's feeling like this pain, in, you know, his private area. And he finds out that he was like bit by a vampire. And like because of that, he has like a very unique way that he has has to get blood from people and yeah you know, it's kind of like you know and you know 
probably from certain areas. That, that's kind of all I could say. I really don't want to be graphic about explaining this movie, but it's very, very goofy and like real over the top and everything. I actually thought it was kind of funny though. It's like, like I said, it's just a really super goofy, over the top movie. But anyway though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.